Hi, this is Regina Davis, NARUC's Director of Communications, and joining me today is Atai Dadong, Global Head of Smart Cities and IoT for ITRON, one of NARUC's many sponsors. And first, I'd like to thank you for joining us today to talk a little bit about smart cities, and I'd also like to thank ITRON for continuing to sponsor NARUC and its meetings. Welcome. Thank you very much, Regina. Great to be here with you. Yes, so smart cities is a topic that we're hearing more and more about these days. Can you give us a brief overview of smart cities? Just what are they? Well, we all uh, know what cities are and, and we all know that cities are uh, becoming the main centers for the bigger part of the population of the world. And, and it seems that that trend is continue to happen where more and more people leave rural areas and, and in favor of urban areas. And those urban areas are growing very, very fast. And, and that is true really all around the world. Um, and the, these cities are facing a lot of challenges, challenges around how to maintain their infrastructure, how to, uh, that were not always designed for such a big population when they started. Think about cities uh, uh, in, in the United States, like uh, maybe uh, Boston, that are uh, some of the older cities here, and, and they were definitely not designed for the size and the population that they're having today. Um, and, and for their success in, in a way. Um, there is a lot of that infrastructure that is aging, that is probably a, a needs to be replaced. There is a, a, a lot of uh, new objectives for these cities that are around sustainability. As we know, a lot of uh, mayors, governors and, and, and states and, and governments around the world are imposing very, very ambitious uh, sustainability goals. So how do we achieve those goals? Uh, there are challenges uh, around uh, uh, the expectations of us citizens. We are getting used to services that, uh, on, uh, that we can use on our phones. Uh, uh, by a click of a button and, and we get things delivered to us in a few hours in many cases. Um, and, and we expect the same level of service from uh, 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 our uh, municipalities and the cities where we live in. Uh, so all these are uh, bringing together a set of challenges that uh, bring cities to uh, think about how they can improve those services, how they can improve and modernize their infrastructure. And that usually means adoption of technology and, and when the city transform itself to use that technology to digitize itself in a way, uh, we call it a smart city. And, and, and it's really about improving uh, uh, the uh, life of citizens and, and that the city serves. And it's around uh, economic benefits, it's around social benefits, and it's around environmental benefits. So just why are smart cities important for utilities and more importantly for us, for our members, why should uh, utility regulators really start paying more attention to smart cities? This is a great question. I, I think that um, when we look at the ambitions of cities in terms of this digital transformation and the need that they have, uh, uh, and, and this is a tremendous, uh, a lift sometimes, and, and it's not as easy for uh, any city to, to uh, from a financial perspective, to do that. And uh, it, it is very well recognized in the industry that this transformation needs to happen in collaborations with as many parties as possible. And for us at ITRON, we've been working with both cities and utilities uh, around the globe for, for over four decades now. And we, we believe that the utilities have an amazing position to play a key role in the transformation of those cities. They are already serving every home. Uh, and and they, they know how to make very big investments. They have the capability to do that, thanks to uh, NARIC and the Public Utility Commissions, or, and they have uh, the business model also in place to do that. Um, and and they, um, they have the execution power, right, from skill sets and, and people and boots on the ground, and, and, and that is very important. So they have a key role to play, uh, and, and we at ITRON um, 
really believe that they are at the center of this transformation for every city and every community. Well, I understand that smart cities also play a role in uh, public safety. Can you talk about, about that aspect of smart cities and some other key benefits that people can relate to when we think of smart cities? Right, we believe uh, that the adoption of technology should not be just about technology, just for the benefits of uh, showing off what an amazing technology the city or the utility has. But again, think back about really, what is that benefit? And when we think about public safety and security, we have demonstrated at ITRON again and again, that there is, um, if we keep focused on, on the benefits for the community, we can achieve amazing things. A few examples. In, in New York with uh, our partner uh, Consolidated Edison there, we uh, ConEd, we have deployed um, methane gas leak uh, detectors in, in the gas rooms across uh, the city. And those uh, methane detectors uh, are extremely sensitive and uh, 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 they can detect the gas leaks way before they are actually dangerous and before there is any other symptoms in terms of smell or any other thing. And, and those are leveraging uh, uh, the AMI networks that we've deployed with uh, ConEd to meaning that they are extremely reliable in terms of communication. And um, as soon as they detect the gas leaks, they can send an alert automatically so that crews uh, uh, from the utility will come and, and, and attend to that leak immediately. And also make sure that uh, uh, emergency crews from fire department will get there to make sure that everybody stays safe. Uh, and this is really, we're looking back and uh, we've started those deployments maybe over a year ago. Um, uh, dozens of detections with zero false positives. This is obviously a, 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 a something that not only helps uh, bring more confidence uh, in what the utility does for the community, but also uh, I believe uh, uh, save materials, save maybe even lives. Um, there's a public safety uh, aspect when we think about flood, flood uh, detectors, right? When we look in a lot of cities, uh, unfortunately suffer repeatedly from floods uh, uh, and, and knowing about them on time gives us enough time to maybe alert the population and, and be able to act upon this uh, and maybe diminish the uh, risks for the people. Um, we have, uh, partners uh, that uh, bring uh, extremely interesting technology and gunshot detection technology so that we also deploy with our utility partners on their networks so we can even collaborate with local police departments to help them detect uh, gunshots and uh, and it's quite unfortunate that we need it but these technologies are really really helping uh, all together to to help uh, uh, at the end of the day to create more uh, safe and secure communities. Those are some excellent, uh, very relevant uh, examples. Now let's talk for a minute about more efficient delivery of services. Can you explain and give us some examples? Absolutely. I think that, um, you know, the when we think about the core of what we do is we really help at, at ITRON, we really help our, our uh, utilities and, and cities that we work with to better manage energy and water. And what it means, it means to be more efficient with those extremely important resources, right? right. For example, with uh, water detect leaks. So we talked before about gas safety. Now, uh, it, it's very important to know that there is a lot of water that gets lost uh, in the infrastructure, in the pipes, way before it even gets to our uh, uh, houses. Uh, how to detect those leaks on time, how to make sure that we can find them and, and reduce the amount of uh, uh, lost water in, in the system. Uh, that is something that we work with a lot of water utilities around the country and around the globe to do very efficiently. Uh, when we deploy our smart streetlight systems uh, 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 with cities and with utilities, we help them uh, significantly reduce the amount of energy used 
uh, by those systems. And, and again, many of the utilities uh, around the country own hundreds of thousands, if not millions of streetlights. And if you're able to reduce uh, the energy consumed by those streetlights up to 75, 80%, Wow. Uh, this is a significant savings. Think about uh, 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 not just the uh, uh, optimization in energy. Think about the fact that we're now monitoring all these lights from a distance. We reduce significantly also the number of truck rolls that we need in order to attend and maintain those systems. So overall, there is a huge uh, sustainability component here. We reduce carbon emissions by both uh, uh, reducing the amount of energy used and by reducing the amount of truck rolls and maintenance uh, that we are needing here. So it's operational excellence, but also energy uh, uh, management uh, at its best. Okay, so Given those really great examples, how pervasive are smart cities? Is, is, it, is it fair to assume that every major city is a smart city? Well, it is becoming a, 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 a safer and safer assumption over time. I think that it's really something that the bigger cities started first, but we are now seeing um, uh, even the uh, smaller and medium cities uh, deploying around uh, uh, the world and, and starting that wave of adoption going into not just uh, uh, cities like Chicago, with whom we've deployed over 270,000 smart streetlights uh, here in the US, but uh, uh, we work with uh, cities like Spokane, for example, in Washington state together with the Vista, our partners to create a smart park. Think about again, uh, uh, this uh, combination of the private sector, the utility and the city to all working together in order uh, uh, to uh, enhance the quality of life of, of the uh, uh, citizens that live in that city. So the, definitely, this is not just the domain for the big cities, but uh, uh, something that we work uh, with the very small cities. And we have even brought uh, uh, together a community of financing uh, um, institutions that can help these smaller cities that maybe have, uh, for them, it's a bigger challenge to adopt these technologies to uh, use our financing partners to be able to uh, uh, get that uh, transformation going. Well, it's good to know that you have given some thought to how uh, some of these technologies can be shared with uh, smaller communities, because it seems like these are very important uh, technologies and innovations that anyone, and everyone should be able to, to benefit from. So before we conclude our chat today, I want to give you the opportunity to just fill in some more blanks and, and tell us what else we should know about smart cities. Thank you. I think the opportunity for every community to uh, adopt technology in order to uh, improve the way they live is still there. And we at ITRON, are, uh, have uh, not just the tools, but also the means to help every community and, and uh, no matter how big or small it is. Uh, uh, and, and we focus on four really big challenges. One is how to look at sustainability and resiliency around the infrastructure of the city, how to monitor and understand what is going on in the transform, uh, transportation, sorry, uh, infrastructure in a city, right? With the solutions around trend, uh, a traffic monitoring, smart parking, for example. We look a lot at uh, public safety and security. We talked a lot about the uh, uh, gunshot detection, flood alerts, water level monitoring, but even uh, a sewage overflow sensors so that we can understand that it's some work, interesting work that we did with uh, Miami-Dade County is a great example with a partner called US Cubed. And then we, we also look at the digital services, meaning that how we bring all this information back into the citizen, into the hand of the citizen and the city so that they can act on all that information on time. An interesting example is the air quality sensors that uh, we've been deploying in, in many of the cities uh, we work with. Um, and, you know, 
up until a few years ago, maybe people were not really sure why do we really need air quality sensors. Unfortunately, when you look at all the uh, wildfires like we've been having in California, one of the main uh, issues beyond the, 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 the burning uh, forest is, is, of course, that this is generating uh, a huge pollution, pollution cloud across, across, that doesn't stop at the borders of California right. uh, alone, but really impacts the, the quality of life and, and the health uh, is really a health hazard for millions of people. Uh, and so understanding what is the situation in real time is extremely important for senior people uh, and, and, and other people with sensitivities. And it's now becoming a very common thing to install air quality sensors everywhere. Uh, so that we can have this hyper local information all the time and the utilities that we work with are helping uh, tremendously with those deployments uh, we think about the components like electrification in in our uh, we see more and more electric vehicles uh, how do we accelerate that deployment because it's great for our sustainability objectives but uh, keeping our grids electric grids uh, uh, safe and, and make sure that we protect them and we do it uh, by get, providing the best services at the best prices for the consumers. This is really a plethora and, and a very wide spectrum of solutions that we deploy at ITRON that we work with our uh, utility partners around the world. Wow, I mean, you've really given us a lot to think about uh, today. So I would, I would invite all of our our viewers, our, our members in particular, to visit the ITRON website to learn more about smart cities. And I thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Regina.